Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. I want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. When you're a football team or a basketball team or even a baseball team, you like to control the tempo, the flow, the rhythm, the style of a football game or a basketball game or a baseball game. The game you're playing, you want to be the, the team that creates the tempo in the game, the style of the game. That's, that's a goal every week. And quite simply put, when you play against this LSU team, you don't get to. You don't get to. You will be in a shootout whether you like it or not against LSU because you're not going to stop LSU, and LSU's probably not stopping you. And if you can't keep up, then you're Auburn, and you're just out of luck. But if you can, and you're going to beat them, you got to do what Alabama did and score almost every time you ball, have the ball. you got to do what Florida State did and score almost every time you had the ball. You've got to do what Ole Miss did, score almost every time you have the ball. What Missouri tried to do, what Arkansas tried to do. But you are going to get into that type of matchup no matter what. And I think if, because I've had conversations on this show, on other shows, other podcasts, with other beat writers or, or people that cover other teams, like the Alabama writers, two different guys that I talked to in Tuscaloosa said, you know, Alabama's had some offensive struggles. You know, I don't, you know, I said, look, they're going to score. They'll be just fine on offense. And the same thing happened with Florida. They're like, well, I, I don't know about Florida's offense. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Just wait. And both of those teams rolled up a ton of points and a ton of yards because that's just the way it is. And I would imagine on the flip side, there are probably some people in college station who are saying, you know, this, this Aggie defense is, is really tough and we've got all these five stars up front and we've slowed some teams down. Like I, no, you don't, you will not slow LSU down period. Unless you knock Jaden Daniels out of the game, you will not slow LSU down. And on the flip side, if, even if you're worried about your third team quarterback, they're going to move the football and probably score a lot of points because that's just the way it is with this LSU football team. You don't get to decide what type of game it is. It's already decided once you hit the field. So you either decide to jump in the car and keep up or you get left in the dust. So the question is, can A&M jump in the car and keep up? And that's kind of where I wanted to start today. Statistically speaking, and I know that these statistics are a little bit watered down because you started the year with Connor Wigman, and then you had Max Johnson, and now you're moving on to Jalen Henderson, who I do fully believe will be the starting quarterback on Saturday based on what Billy Lutri has said over on Tech Sags. There's not really much indication that Max Johnson's even practicing at this point. So you'll see Jalen Henderson. I understand these statistics don't factor in Jalen Henderson very much, only a game and a half, but it's what we got, so it's what we'll use. They're fifth in the SEC in scoring offense, which is fine. That's a solid offense. They've run it 10th best in the league, which isn't great. Passed it 7th best in the league. That's middle of the road. Total offense, 8th, middle of the road. On third downs, they're 5th in the league. But they don't do well in getting touchdowns in the red zone. Statistically speaking, they're 12th in the league in that category. But, you know, in recent weeks, 51 points on Ole Miss, 30, uh, oh, sorry, 35 points on Ole Miss, 51 uh, on Mississippi State. They were not very good on offense earlier in the year. Against Auburn, they weren't good on offense. Against Alabama, they weren't great on offense. Against Tennessee, they weren't very good on offense. But they've been a little bit better of late. Jalen Henderson is their third-team quarterback, as you know. He's a transfer. Um, he's a third-year college player. He's left-handed. He's a good, not great athlete um, and doesn't have a huge arm. He's, he's a below-average talent for an SEC quarterback. Against Mississippi State, he was thrust into action when Max got hurt. Uh, 11 of 19 for 150 yards, two touchdowns, did not turn it over, um, had 12 carries in that game for 60 yards and two more touchdowns. They'll run some read option with him. He'll tuck it and run a little bit. Again, he's not a great athlete. He doesn't look anything like Jaden Daniels back there, but he runs a little bit better than Max, obviously. Uh, against Abilene Christian last week when they had an opportunity and Jimbo wasn't there and you, you put in a game plan for Jalen Henderson as opposed to him coming in for Max. Uh, 16 of 23, 260 yards through the air, two touchdowns and an interception. He ran it 12 more times, so 12 carries in both games, um, just 27 yards and did not have a score on the ground. He's, again, a pretty average dude, but the guys on the outside are not average. They have some real talent out there. It starts, in my opinion, with Evan Stewart. He was a five-star last year, had a great freshman season. He's the best package of size, speed, 
quickness, hands, like the total package, Evan Stewart is the best. Now, he may not play. There are rumors swirling all over the place that Billy Lucci has not tamped down that Evan Stewart may be portaling pretty quickly. And the question is, do you want to go out there in Baton Rouge with a third-string quarterback and play, or do you want to sit? And if those rumors are swirling and Billy Lucci's saying, yeah, they're they're working on that, this is just my opinion. That's a hard thing to come back from. Like saying, yeah, I'm probably not going to play. And then all of a sudden, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll play. Like it, it seems like you would lean the other way eventually, right? But I don't know. We, that, that decision has not been made um, and announced if it has been made. Um, they have other guys, though, for sure. Anaya Smith is the quick guy. He's the slot guy. He's the playmaker, the agile dude who's got some speed to burn. They have done a terrible job of getting him the football this year. Terrible. He has two touchdowns, and in four different games, he's had three or less catches. This is a guy who had potential to go to the NFL early, but he got hurt last year, decided to come back, and they just haven't used him properly, in my opinion. Two touchdowns this year for Anaya Smith is is weak. Noah Thomas is the size wide receiver, 6'6", 200 pounds. And then Moose Muhammad, of course, got great bloodlines with his dad, who was a great NFL player, and he had the one-handed catch in the end zone against LSU last year. He's come on and been been pretty good of late. Those guys are are very, very good on the outside. They have a trio of running backs that were very highly touted. Uh, Ruben Owens was a five-star. He's a freshman. Le'Veon Moss is from right here in Louisiana, was good for them as a freshman and has been good this year. Amari Daniels, a very highly talented player, too. And that's where LSU has to focus. If LSU can somehow, some way, slow Texas A&M's running game down and make Jalen Daniels be the guy who's got to keep pace, uh, sorry, Jalen Henderson, make him the guy who's got to keep pace with Jaden Daniels, you feel good about that. But if you allow Texas A&M to turn around and hand it off to Owens and hand it off to Moss and hand it off to Daniels and you make Jalen Henderson's life easy, then you're going to be in some trouble because they're going to score a bunch of points. That was the key for LSU against Florida as well. And Florida really did get the ground game going a little bit. Remember, ATN kind of had some highlight real plays against LSU. Um, Johnson also a, a very, very talented player. That was what Florida was probably going to lean on. And they, they ran it for 177 yards. ATN had 99 yards and three scores. Montreal Johnson had 70 more. I don't have any expectation that LSU is going to step up and put the clamps on an A&M running game, but that ought to be mission one because Henderson is limited as a passer and I don't think is going to go out there and throw for 346 and four scores. It would, I can't say it would surprise me against this LSU defense, right? But I can say that it would be out of character for him based on his talent level and the amount he's played at this level. Job one, you've got to slow this run game down. And I don't mean stop it. I mean slow it down. If you can hold those three guys to 120 yards and one touchdown, LSU will win in a walk in the fourth quarter. If it starts getting up to 185, Devon A. Chain last year, 230 and four scores, well, you're in, you're in for it in the fourth quarter. And it may be last man with the ball wins. It's going to be up and down. That's where it's got to, to start for LSU defensively. Find a way to get Greg Penn and Whit Weeks and Harold Perkins, Mason Smith and Jordan Jefferson. Get those guys ready to, to show up on first and second down and create some pass rush opportunities because A&M, where they're, they're talented at running back, they're talented at wide receiver, their protection has been atrocious this year. It's gotten two quarterbacks hurt, and it got their coach fired for $70 million because they can't block. They give up sack after sack after sack. That hasn't been LSU's MO, getting back there and getting pressure on the quarterback and creating sacks. But if you can slow the rundown and get into third down, you can let that porous offensive line get to work. And when I say get to work, I mean miss slide protections, miss blocks, get bull rushed, just be the grease fire that it's been for three months. That's what you've got to turn it into. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your Fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.